That's it, Evie. Oh, wow. It's the half-term holidays. <laughs> which means an onslaught of little VIPs at Chewton Glen. Round of applause. The hotel is running at full capacity. Did you go for lunch? Did you have something to eat? Christy Willis is one of the duty managers at Chewton Glen. Enjoy your afternoon. You. Nice you. to see you. She's worked at the hotel for six years. I said to my mum, I've got to visit this hotel that's near you called Chewton Glen. And my mum was like, yeah, OK, great, let's go and visit. And so we parked up, walked up past the tree houses, and I was like, wow, this is amazing. What is this all about? And I was like, I've got to find out if there's an opportunity here for me, which there was. <laughs> Christy worked her way up from being a receptionist yeah. to her current role. My management style would be relaxed with a bit of spice. <laughs> tree houses all ready to go. So, are you ready? This is the buggy, your carriage that will take you across. Thank you. Jump on in. She's on her way to Chewton's luxury tree houses with seven year old Tandy, who's on a staycation with her mum, Naomi. <laughs> we come every year. So, we've been coming, yeah. We, we wanted to find somewhere that was fun, so the tree, that concept of the tree house. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Let's do this. <laughs> The tree houses stand 35 feet above a secluded valley and each cost 1.2 million pounds to build. Here we are, welcome to your tree house. The tree houses are the legacy that I'm most proud of. They're eight years old this year. The occupants in the first month was 98% was and I don't think we've had them empty for a weekend ever since then. They're incredibly luxurious. They're incredibly comfortable. I've got this suit in costume. <laughs> no, there's there's usually marshmallows. There's usually marshmallows up there somewhere. But there's not. Ah. Treehouse guests pay up to £4,500 a night for a room, so the service needs to be first class. So, fireplace all ready to go. It's a nice and cozy. What I'm really looking for is a match. <gasps> With no marshmallows in sight, Christy gets Chewton's treehouse concierge on the case. Okay. Christy, for Joel. The marshmallows that she's been looking forward to. It's the chocolate and marshmallows, the hot chocolate ones, the buttons. OK, I need them sort of now-ish, really. Families, when they come to a treehouse, it's so exciting. And it's all ages, you know, it's from teenagers to younger children. <laughs> It's an experience for them as well, and they, they grow up telling those stories. You know, it was my seventh birthday and it was amazing. Here we are, extra large marshmallows as well. <laughs> so we got some chocolate buttons and then some extra large oh marshmallows. <laughs> and a Berylissimo for mum. Thank you so much. Non-alcoholic Berylissimo, OK? See you later, bye-bye. <laughs> she was excited for marshmallows, so get her marshmallows. It's not a problem. In the boardroom, the senior management team are at their daily meeting. We have the, the Halloween event tonight. Chef, if you can just let Sergio know what you need from a setup point of view. Um, umbrellas, I think. Umbrellas and tables. I will go through the weather forecast now because I'm actually optimistic that it's not going to rain just for that window. If we can make sure that we just double check with the COVID measures are all in place around the hotel. The events are really important for Chewton Glen. They always have been. When people come here, um, they get something special. We've had to sort of change the parameters this year. So our Halloween experience in the Ward Garden is to make sure that we tick all the boxes from a health and safety point of view. It is Halloween, so let's all have fun. Chef, have you got your outfit? <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got it on now. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> it's fun as a chef. The hotel's planned elaborate dressing, gifts and ghost stories for kids. Adults can enjoy cocktails and pumpkin flatbreads. The night will end with an epic firework display. So what I'm going to start doing, I'm going to start putting the props out here. I'm going to place everything where I think it should go. But with just five hours till the event starts, the weather has turned. Is this going to blow through? 
<laughs> well, I've sent, I've sent back to the store to go and get some more weight. OK. Because we had enough weight for if it wasn't 50 mile an hour gale. Cancelled celebrations will mean thousands of pounds down the drain and scores of disappointed families. If it gets any worse, we'll take a break and we can always come back. I mean, yeah. If we need more hands, then we'll throw more hands at it. OK. Andrew has come outside to check on his event team. Hello, Jane, the weather's going to according to plan, isn't it? <laughs> I know the challenge is for the crew. That's probably the hard part right now. Yeah. I'm still confident. Let's just check the weather. Oh, dear. So it's going to be raining till 3, so that's not so great. We'll speak to Tim when he arrives as well and just make sure he's still 100% happy with the fireworks. 4.30, doors will open. Come heaven or high water, or whatever the saying is right now. <laughs> but, uh... Which one do you want to take home? This one! Lovely. Luxury hotel Chewton Glen is overrun by families on their half-term break. There you go, have a go. It's off, it's off, it's off, it's off. They are hosting an outdoor Halloween event, and after a rainy day of setup, the weather has cleared. It looks like the sun's out for a while. It's all coming together. General Manager Andrew Cook is checking in with the events team. Really looks great, huh? Well, As it gets darker... It's going to get better. It's going to get better, isn't it? So, yeah. Well done, you. You guys yeah, yeah. have done an amazing job, considering where we started. What do they always say? It's always darkest before the dawn, isn't it? You know, so... That's cold. It's freezing! Oh, it's cold. It's cold. It's cold. It's cold. It's cold. Let's get this. What colour would you like? Orange. Orange? There's something happening everywhere, and there's enough for everyone, there's enough space for everyone, no? And I think that it's worked out so well. <gasps> and we've been so blessed with the weather. To see it pan out like this is better than I thought it would be. I thought be, the wind would be a lot stronger, so... Good news all round, so far. <laughs> the Halloween event is in full flow. Staff, guests and VIP Amanda Holden are enjoying the festivities. But Andrew has been forced to turn his attention to some national news. See, there's a sudden announcement that uh, the PM is going to make an announcement at 5 o'clock. He's indicating that we're going to come for another lockdown, which will include hospitality. So we just want to hear what the PM actually says. If the immediate lockdown comes in, we know the phones are going to start ringing, people are going to start cancelling their bookings. Um, then we have to look at shutting the hotel down that we did properly last time. All the curtains are closed, all the furniture is covered in dust cloths. The kitchens are locked up and sealed up. The food fridges are all empty and the lights are all off. In the summer, it was, it was, it was fine because obviously we had, we had the light and it was light a lot later, so it wasn't so scary, if, if that's uh, eerie. But she's a, she's a mature building. So she creaks, she groans, you hear things, and I think people are going to struggle a lot harder this time around because of because where we are in winter. Andrew also needs to consider the impact on hotel staff. It's so difficult. These guys have just come out of three months. I know we've had a couple of months of being busy, but a lot of people took a lot of strain in those three months. I think it's going to be the mental, the mental welfare and... and and also the financial impact on, on people. Let's see. Let's see what he says first. You know, I'm, I'm always one for not trying to second guess. Wow. From Thursday until the start of December, you must stay at home. You may only leave home for specific reasons, including for education, for work, let's say if you cannot work from home. 
think that's, uh, we've got the picture. Depressing, isn't it? That means we're all going to go back to our boxes, as we were. <laughs>